How's it going, everybody? This is Sebastian, Seabass, if you know me on Discord. And I wanted to show you all something I've been working on for my upcoming custom adventure, Thunder at the Gates of Hell, which is a Seven Thunders type adventure where you're trekking into the Shadowlands. It's reminiscent of Diablo or perhaps a hack and slash action jam pack thing like Doom or something like that with a lot of resource management. And I wanted to use Foundry Virtual Tabletop to make this feel very video game since that's the vibe that I'm aiming for here. As you can see, there's a lot of characters here with their HP or I guess fatigue and their strife showing. Foundry, although it does have a narrative dice L5R module that works very well. It's very good, very cool. It's got a lot of compendiums, rooms for characters, and you can roll stuff on your character sheets, like you can see here. It's very awesome. Although it does have a module for this narrative dice edition of L5R, it's got a lot more support for 5th edition SRD D&D. Which now, the new L5R book that just came out, Adventures in Rokugan, is in 5e SRD format. So I feel like this is a match made in heaven. It's got a lot of automation and support for making combat super easy, which is what I'm going for when it comes to this Thunder at the Gates of Hell adventure. I want to make it super snappy to where you can go from room to room fighting enemies and still being able to use these narrative dice, at least in this case, for what I want to focus on to tell a story while you're going through these combat encounters or puzzle encounters or whatever. And I guess I kind of just want to flex a little bit and kind of show this is a recreation of one of the Caillou watchtowers that you can see in the Shadowlands source book. We got this layer tool that shows all the different levels here. You've got things like the siege tower at the top, which by the way, if I zoom out, doesn't look amazing. I had to realign some things. This is my first time making a map like this. This is a zoomed out view of it. You got the siege tower. Try to make cute little crab claws because this is a crab clan Caillou tower. It's got a lot of enemies. You got a big ogre here. You got a Caillou engineer who's kind of stranded, surrounded by goblins. You've got the strategy room, which has the big bear himself, Hida Kasada, standing there talking to the players. There's Shinsei trying to hype them up as the Seven Thunders. I know there's not seven here, but long story. Hidden rooms like this here with a chest full of jade. And I will show you the rest of the rooms here, but just real quick, I want to show you this. When you click on a player, it actually closes off that wall like you see there. And then they can open it. Sound effect and everything, and there's all those goblins. There's still this secret door here, which I might have the roll for or something. And it tracks the light. It tracks where they see, which is going to be really interesting for some of the other floors. Let's take it upstairs. See, there's like these walls here that kind of block line of sight. And by moving, you can start seeing some of the enemies that are in here. Pretty cool, right? You could even do things like one-way directional walls. So like jumping off this platform, like so. You can't get back on which I'm just going to use the keyboard to show that you can't get back on. Of course, being the game master, you, I could drag them, but naturally they wouldn't be able to. And I guess I'll walk you through this building. Try to put some flack, some junk all around to try to make it look lively. This is the living quarters. This room doesn't lead anywhere. Don't worry about that. But this room leads people to like an armory. This room leads people to like a training room for reserve units. And this is directly pulled from the very nice isometric watercolor drawing from the Shadowlands book, by the way. Beautiful work as always from the artists. And then pulling it to this room, there's this lone, I guess, Hida or maybe Hiruma or something kind of soldier that's here, Sabushi as well as some skeletons from these corpses that can come alive. They're hidden right now from the players, but I can make them appear if I wanted to. Then you can go downstairs further. 
This is a crossbow room. Going all the way out to this side, you see how the line of sight is kind of changing and blocking with these gears or wheels, whatever they do <laughs> in this watchtower. You can see outside, you can see like part of the roofs of some of the buildings out here. Which, by the way, when you get out to this courtyard, which is on another floor, those roofs disappear. You can actually go into this building here. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. There's a secret door here. You can go to another part of the building. I'll show you where that leads here in a second. And then here there's the kill windows where crossbowmen would be peeking out, trying to shoot whatever's out here coming from the Shadowlands. Right now they're being manned by goblins because there's they're taken over. Line of sight is not blocked from up here when you're looking down. And that's because this is a higher position is what I'm trying to emulate. And then if you take it down here, you can jump down. You can't jump back up. And now you can't see up here because you're at a lower level. I just think that is so neat. That is so cool. And then you can come down here where you're in like the active living quarters of units that are currently guarding the wall. These are a bunch of bedrooms, essentially. Very small rooms. Only what's necessary. There's a hole here you can jump down to reach into some underground caverns. But there's another way we're going to take to get there. We're actually going to go around. One thing here that I also want to show is... I haven't added them yet, but maybe putting some like units out here. Maybe doing combat with an Oni or some goblins or something, just to kind of show what's going on out here. Put them in probably a little bit later. And then there's the secret door, which leads to the tunnels. We saw the other entrance upstairs. And then this way it leads to just like absolute carnage. Kind of thinking maybe something was thrown against the side of the watchtower that busted out the walls or something like that. Ended up killing a lot of men or whatever. Just absolutely carnage um like you would expect from a game like diablo or doom or something i don't know and then you come out here this is like a courtyard area with a mess hall and this mess hall the story is these ashiguru are protecting innocents that live or that are mainly just servants on the site or in the watchtower it's things like your cooks and people who clean and stuff Got a three-way intersection here that leads to a medical facility. You can see behind the shoji screens. Might put like a corpse or something back there. Then you got your medic here. And then you can leave. Now, what I'm thinking is, if the players want to get healed or cleansed by the medic that's here, they're going to be told to go to storage to get them more materials so they can do that kind of operation. So they're going to go all the way around, probably pepper in some goblins or something. This is like a shrine. Maybe they can pray to a deity or an ancestor or something to try to get a benefit. Maybe it's for their passion or something. Come in here to the shelter and, ah, there's zombies <laughs> that they have to move around these drums in order to fight. I know I'm moving them because I'm the GM. I can put it over it, but... You actually can't walk through there's walls that are blocking complete total movement over these drums so it makes them a centerpiece you can move around them while the zombies try to get you maybe they'll try to flank both sides or something make it really interesting and then as you leave this area there's a couple of directions we can take i'm going to show you the closest set piece you can go downstairs here and this is like a forge where they maintain weapons that may have been damaged during routines or during endless war that the crab are involved in. Take it outside and this would be where they're maybe cooking, still maintaining, but outside just to make more room. They're making these big old arrows for that siege weapon at the very top of the tower. This is a platform where they would carry those big arrows way up. And then we're going to take you upstairs, back where we were. And then there's another door right here that you can go through. And either you can take a left to go through to reach that hole that we saw earlier, or you can just take the stairs. There's a bunch of goblins who are pillaging this room. 
And then this will take you to this well room where there's this cavern down here. Bunch of goblins down here as well. And then when you take it all the way outside, there's a big old Oni here. This Oni is going to try to probably fight the players at first when it sees it's going to lose or something. Maybe it'll try to run across. But you can see here there's a bunch of shadows. There's a bunch of walls that kind of block line of sight. If one of these guys was completely behind that wall here, I, your player wouldn't be able to see them. And then if you move to another position, you can see that all of a sudden. I just think that's really neat. You also notice, too, whenever I drag out, it tells you the range band. If you were thinking about attacking with a weapon, you could use like a ruler tool to see how far your weapon reaches. And then out here, it's pretty much just a bunch of junk. Just to make it look like an encroaching Shadowlands. So yeah, I just thought that was really neat. And here it does have room for some roll tables if you want to set up some random encounters or if you want to set up some droppable loot. Maybe a player broke their sword. Maybe they lost their throwable items like their knives or arrows if you're keeping track of that, I guess. You can make those as droppable loot. Or instead of making it random, you could just plan the whole thing out. You can say that these archers all have yumis and if a player wants to pick up a yumi they could just pull it off the goblin archer and if you want to give them more powerful weapons maybe you can have the enemies they fight to carry them first and then they can just grab them i don't know still kind of working that out i don't i've been playing around with random loot tables for thunder at the gates of hell for a while and i'm just having a really hard time figuring out what's appropriate for this kind of campaign i was hoping that I can give loot based on like the Wheel of Discord or just based off of planning encounters or something. But it's just so easy to say I'm giving too much loot. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show this map. I'm just really proud of it. I know looking at top level, it looks super messy. <laughs> but that just means I have to realign some of the entrances and exits for these stairs. That's all it really was. This is my way to try to sell you Foundry, because I think it's awesome, and I really think you should give it a try. Oh, by the way, if you want to know where I got a lot of these assets from, I got a lot of these Japanese-style assets from Tom Kartos. Super amazing work. If you join his Patreon, you get access to all of his backlog, basically. But if you don't want to join a Patreon, and instead you want to purchase this stuff wholesale there's a discord for foundry and it has a channel for l5r there's a pin there and I'll, I'll probably put a link in the description for a whole village with a castle and everything that's in that japanese style i did not get a lot of use out of it for this the specific one-time purchase that i'm talking about but all of the individual assets, which I believe also come with that village, absolutely useful for making all of this here. Then using Dungeon Draft, which is another application to throw all those assets in and make a map out of. That's how I did it. Thanks for watching. That's it.